Yo, who's knocking on the stu- Where? Welcome, y'all. I ain't seen y'all in a little minute, man. Look, a lot of y'all been asking for the studio tour, though, right? I've been seeing y'all. Like, and like, look, I ain't gonna hold y'all, man. 2023 studio tour. Let's get right to it. Look, and we're gonna do things a little bit different this way, man. Y'all already know who it is, man. It's your boy, cute everybody, aka the wave, man. Y'all know the rest. But look, let's get right into the prank dang thing, but y'all gonna see it through my angle, right? Hey. Welcome. Let's get into it. So let's get right into this prank thing thing. All right, look, before we actually get into the studio, guys, we got to start with something very important to me, right? Now, if you've seen the 2021 tour, you guys seen a lot of the equipment. And as you can see, guys, we are in a whole different room. And as you can see, this room was actually built out from scratch, right? From scratch, acoustically treated. So that's where we're gonna start. That's where we're definitely gonna start with, all right? So gotta take us a couple steps back, right? We are gonna uh, moonwalk it. Please let me know if your vocal presets got you in like this. You play with my brain, I'm starting going insane. Nah, you're looking for this type. What about these type vocals? What about these? Okay, and please don't let this passion distract you. Okay, then gives we like Tyler Perry to listen to your fan. If you liked how any of these vocal presets sounded, listen, it is no secret. WaveMonopoly.com got you. They have many different vocal styles for many different dogs. And third party plugins and stock plugins, meaning you don't have to have all that, that extra stuff, all right? So if you're looking to up your quality, see you guys at WaveMonopoly.com. Right, and we're gonna start right here, right? So as you can see, guys, what are we looking at? What are we looking at? We're actually looking at the door, right? We're looking at this right here, right? So what this is right here is simply the room, okay? I just wanna show you guys the room's thickness, okay? This is not your regular little, you know, your little skinny door. This ain't, this ain't one of these, all right? It is not one of these. Right, so what happens in this door, we have acoustic insulation. Now, what is acoustic insulation? Acoustic insulation, guys, is what it sounds like. It's acoustically insulating the room, right? Which stops the noise from coming in and the noise that is in from coming out, all right? So just telling you guys that this room, I can bang music in here all day. I mean, it's not like the neighbors gonna hear anyway, but I can bang music in here. I'm not gonna disturb my 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 loved ones in the house, right? So let's go ahead and close this door. Right now we're in the studio. Now, as you can see, guys, and as you can see right here, we start to get into the acoustic paneling, right? So as you can see, guys, we got the acoustic panel that is dark gray with the white gray going on all around the room. Super sick design, guys. Um, I think it's about four inches, um, four inches thick fiberglass acoustic paneling behind it, right? So we have acoustic paneling going around the studio. It's a, like a yellow fiberglass. And then we had covered it with the fabric wall, right? Now, before we get into any equipment, guys, I wanna show you some of the coolest parts of this studio that I got built, right? So as you can see right here, guys, it's a very collaborative room, right? We have a, uh, we have a basically a, a step, right? We have a step right here where we can have people come, you know, come through, right? One of y'all. Y'all can come through, sit down with your boy, and we can collab just like this. Pass you the ox. You start working on the laptop, right? Start working on the laptop and go ham, right? So we have a collaborative space back here where it's just a good vibe, super comfortable space for visitors. Anybody who's just in the studio vibe, they can just chill out, you know what I mean? And just rock out. Now, if you take a look behind us, you can see we have acoustic paneling going on right here, right? Wood diffusers to be exact. Um, what are wood diffusers? Wood diffusers are basically to diffuse the sound, right? So it wants to break up the sound and spread it around the room. So as you can see, if we really get up really close, you can see a lot of these, these um, cutouts right here are different sizes, right? We have some deeper holes, we got some. <laughs> And we got some less deeper holes, right? We have some barely cut out and we have some deeper ones, like I said, right? So if I speak really close, like I'm gonna move the microphone here. Yo, yo, 
I don't know if y'all can hear it, but basically, um, from right here, listening to me here, opposed to listening to me right here, you can hear that the sound is being just diffracted and just sounds different, right? So when the speaker sends the sound out, it hits the back wall and diffracts around the room, right? So we have the acoustic treatment to go with that. And this is part of that as well, right? So we got some diffusers on the back wall. Now, let's get into another piece that I really love, which is this desk, all right? This is a desk that was um, customly kind of built, as you guys can see. Um, and we got racks put in here, right? So we have the infamous, might as well get into it, the CL1B tube tech, right? So we have the CL1B tube tech right here, which is my favorite compressor. We can get into that later, but we have the CL1B in the rack space right here, right? Now, the cool thing about it, now the cool thing about it is actually the routing, right? As you can see, we have clearly um, cable management going crazy down here. You know what I mean? Super, super neat. So if you need that, hit me up. I got y'all, right? Cable managed, super neat. I got y'all. It's going to cost a few, but I got y'all nonetheless. I'm kidding. But the cable management goes actually behind here and actually goes into something down here, right? And then it travels under the wood and then comes out right here. So that allows me to plug everything from this desk into this desk, right? And that's where we get into the main hover ship, right? The actual desk. As you can see right here, guys, this desk is like amazing, right? So it comes from a company called Studio Desk. On um, the same desk I had in 2021, don't plan on changing it anytime soon. I don't plan on changing it anytime soon because I just love it that much, right? So that's what we got going right there. Um, um, let's just go to the base of the whole operation, right? So it's this right here, the Mac Pro. As you guys um, seen in 2021, we had the, uh, I believe we were going through a MacBook Pro, but as production needs, you know, increases and work increases, guys, we have to get stronger, stronger. We have to get stronger bases, right? So we got the Mac Pro going right here, guys, the cheese grater, the cheese grater, you know what I'm saying? Whenever I need some cheese grated, I definitely throw that thing up there, no problem. You know what I mean? But uh, this Mac Pro right here, guys, if you're thinking about getting a Mac Pro, this is just unreal investment right there, guys. You will have no problems with it. I have nothing, nothing that I do on the computer cannot handle this Mac Pro, right? So this Mac Pro can handle anything I'm doing, and that's dealing with 6K footage, anything, right? Anything, literally. So now, as you can see, we're basically sitting in a listening position, right? Uh, we're in between two speakers, right? And we went with, for the studio, guys, major upgrade for sure is the Focal Audios Trio 11BE, right? So these are some huge speakers. I had to get some big speakers because, of course, guys, as you can see, this room is not small. This is not a small room by any means. So I needed some pretty powerful speakers to actually fill up the sound in this room to make it feel powerful, right? You know? And as well as these speakers come with subwoofers as well, right? So this part down here is actually the subwoofer part, um, pretty big, and it definitely uh, gets a lot of air in the unit. So we're, we're pumping out some pretty, some pretty deep uh, bass frequencies. I'm not sure the actual specs on it. I might pop it up on the screen, maybe not, but just definitely know it gets more than the job done. Uh, favorite speakers I've ever had. Um, I wouldn't recommend these size speakers for any small room, right? Because I had a five inch speakers before these, these were, um, they were actually Mackies, but like I said, because the room was much bigger, ceilings were much taller. We had to go with something that could actually, um, dish out the same power of the room. You know what I mean? So we went with these, like I said, okay, as you can see, we are, um, basically this is this, the desk is set up in a way that basically a workhorse, right? So if you saw the last mic review, the Lawton Audio LT386, the Eden, um, you see that this is set up right here on an actually kind of boom mic type arm, but the arm is set up to the desk and then it comes straight out in front of me, right? The reason why I do this is because I don't really, I don't really stand when I'm recording, right? I don't stand. So um, it's really easy for me just to walk up on the mic, pop it right here, and then we're in there, right? We're definitely in there. Boom, uh, what's good? You know what time? Simple, right? <laughs> so it's super, super easy for me to just sit here at the desk and just work. Um, and like I said, this is actually my favorite microphone right now. You know, um, a lot of you know that I have the Sony C800G. Um, it's not set up right now because that's not my workhorse microphone, right? That is not it. 
Um, it's a super dope microphone, but this is my favorite microphone right now. So it's set up in the workhorse position, ready to go for me at all times, you dig? So let's get into the audio interface. Last time guys, we had the discrete four and today we have the same thing, or do we? We got a discrete four synergy core, okay? Stay tuned for a review coming for that soon, but we're going with the discrete four. Still today, the synergy core version, which is just the upgraded version, guys, and it's been treating me well. A lot of you have known that the other one treated me well as well, so we're not changing, right? Shout out to you UAD folks, but hey, your antelope body over here, man. Can't go wrong. You will hear the difference, right? You will hear the difference. It's, it's an amazing experience when that time comes, so definitely do that. As you can see right here, we got the brush, you dig? Waves on swim, so they hate on him. It's like, huh, let me stop, but look. Um, some of the older things that we did see last time, which was the GTQ, um, GTQC, which is a preamp, right? This is the um, 1176, Neve 1176 clone, basically. The person that made this company, Aurora Audio, which is kind of hard to find, I'm not gonna lie. Um, the person that made that company worked with Neve back in the day and they kind of made their updated urban version of it. So I'm really proud of this. This gives me the sound that I get on um, part of it today. So I basically use the preamp part of that alone. I don't run it through a compressor, but this is a channel strip, right? We have the preamp here. We have the EQ section, three band EQ section. Um, we have pads, we have the high pass filter, 48 volts, and then we have the compressor section right here, okay? I was using this compressor section before. It's, it's very, very, very clean. I think it's, I believe it's a FET compressor in that channel strip, so um, just super dope compressor, super aggressive. Um, I love it. I'm not changing it anytime soon, but I do plan on getting more hardware, so stay tuned for that. The next thing we see here is the drummer. Um, this drummer right here is basically my my speaker. Um, I don't even know what you call it. This is embarrassing. <laughs> I don't know what you call this, bro. But it, it basically hold, it controls my speakers and my headphones and just the output of everything, right? And it allows me to set it up in different modes to where I can dim the audio. I could make it mono to start mixing in mono if I want to. Mute it. Control knob. It just controls everything, right? Um, speaker wise, output wise. It controls everything. Now, as you can see here, guys, we have the SSL Fusion. I like to use this sometimes when I'm working on like serious music. A lot of the stuff that you guys are hearing, it never goes through this, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, this has no recall. So that could be the main reason why you guys, why I'm not using it um, basically for any tutorials or audio that you guys are really hearing. But um, I do use this on mixes, right? So if you get a mix by me, it will be going through this for the mastering phase because this is just the finishing touch, literally. It's that, that last 10% that you're wondering why Drake stuff sounds so fat and 3D type, right? You know what I mean? It's the last touch, it's the finishing touch. This is what you guys are looking for. So if you're getting the mix by me, it's going through that for sure, okay? For sure. All right, now, as you guys can see, we have a booth in the back right here, right? now. Do I record in the booth? Sometimes I go on live, guys. Follow me at CuteAirRuboy on Instagram. Um, sometimes I do get in the booth and I kind of set it up in a way where, you know, I'm recording in the booth. Um, it's acoustically treated as well. There's a lot of stuff in there, but we're not gonna go in there. But something really cool about this booth is this actual door. This is a sound um, insulated door. Basically does the same thing the walls do. It doesn't allow sound in, doesn't allow sound out. Now, if you look closely, you can see the acoustic inside the door through the window. Super huge door. Let's go ahead and close this. You gotta smack that joint shut straight like that. So look, we got the booth in there. It's a very great big booth. So we could even fit uh, drummers in there. I'm not gonna say a whole band, but we could definitely fit a drum set in there. I ain't gonna cap. So it's a, it's a great booth size for me. Now, one of my favorite things of the studio, guys, um, that I found that really helps the sound get right. So is this right here. This is the acoustic paneling, the roof acoustic paneling. As you can see, we have the um, stars in the ceiling. You dig? We literally mixing a Rolls Royce. Like, nah, 
let me chill. But um, you can see we got the lights in the top. So this is actually not just, um, uh, how do I say, cosmetic, but this is also acoustic paneling, right? So this is for the listening position. Um, yeah, this um, does a lot, guys. So if you're in a room that needs some acoustic treatment, guys, definitely please take your acoustic treatment serious. It is the reason... <laughs> Like I said, guys, it's the reason why people sound how they sound in their records, right? You have to get your acoustics right. I'm not saying that you have to go all out and buy an uh, acoustic panel your whole room. Nothing like this at all, right? We've seen. You can go back on my page and look and see the type of results that I've been getting and recording since I've been in a room, literally all walls. All walls, acoustic panels, um, just set up on the walls um, to this now. Um, not the biggest difference, but it just makes those last 10%, that 2% that you're listening to where you're like, wow, that, that just sounds super clean, right? So I will say though, if you can get some cloud panels, do get cloud panels over your listening position at least, if you can. Because what this is gonna allow you to do is hear your music better when you're mixing, okay? A lot of this, a lot of that ceiling is the reason why sometimes those, those mixes are not hitting, you're not hearing it correctly. Um, there's just too much uh, bounce in that room, guys. So. Definitely take that serious with the cloud. I just got the cloud for the first time. I didn't even know. I, I truly, I'm talking from experience, guys. I didn't know the, the difference that the cloud panels would make, but they make a huge difference. So definitely something to invest in, if you can. Something super dope about the studio, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen. One of the my favorite parts of the studio, right? When you just walk into any studio, what you come to a studio for is literally the vibe, right? So as you can see, Looking in the studio, the LEDs go crazy. So, as you can see, we have the app here. We're gonna change the color of this room and it gets nuts, y'all. So, let's go ahead and change it to red. Crazy, just change the whole vibe of the room. <laughs> These LED strips. I personally went with the ones that don't have the dots in them. Um, I went with those for a while, guys. I mean, I love those and all, but nothing can beat the solid stripes nothing it just sets it just sets it off yo when you really start recording in this room and you start customizing that sound to the whatever feel you're going for it gets crazy right and then the same way that we could change the same way that we could change the leds around the room guys we could change them in the sky you hear it Let's change these to red Change these red. You got purple. You got red. It gets crazy, right? So we can do combinations, right? Say we change the room to blue, and we got the red in the sky. We got the purple in the sky. Of course, we got the white. We got the blue. All right, man. There's enough of that, man. Let me just stop. Let me stop. But y'all get the point, man. It's a studio tour, so I had to show it. You feel me? But yeah, man. I think that about sums it up. Um, you know, I don't know if I went to everything specifically, but I think that about sums it up. I ain't gonna lie to you guys. So, <sighs> and I look crazy because that was the studio tour, 2023, Epic Home Studio Tour. See you guys next time. Ouch!